What characteristics should we use to figure out whether an individual process is more like a manufacturing or a service process? To answer that question, let us consider two extreme examples and make some generalizations. Assume that there is a manufacturer that produces some product but provides no service at all. On the other hand, assume that there is a hospital that produces only a service called healthcare but provides no physical products. The output from the manufacturer is a physical product with a shape, size, color, physical characteristics. Healthcare, on the other hand, is not something you can hold in your hand. A service output is also something we can generalize as being more perishable. If I got healthcare treatment today, there is no saying that I won't be back for more tomorrow. As an extreme example, if I go to a 6 to 8 p.m. movie, at 8.01 the service doesn't exist anymore. What remains is only my memory of it. In a manufacturing process you can expect to see raw materials, work in process, as well as finished goods. If I need three truckloads of some product, the manufacturer can ship it to me even if their facility is shut down that week for annual maintenance because they produced it in advance and stored it. A hospital also might have different kinds of inventories such as supplies, medications, and even work-in-process patients. But how many doctors do you know of who can produce a treatment ahead of time and store it so that they can go on vacation for a week? Let me ask you, do you wear clothes? Wait, don't tell me. I take that back. I don't want to know. When was the last time you came into contact with the process that made the garment you are wearing? Do you own a car? When was the last time you came into contact with the process that made the car you are driving? Do you get health care? When was the last time you got health care without coming into contact with the process that gave you the health care? Do you get your hair cut? When was the last time you got a haircut without coming into contact with the process that gave you the haircut? Response time is another distinguishing characteristic. If I want three truckloads of some product, I am willing to wait a week. If I want service at a restaurant, I am upset if I wait for 30 minutes. This is, of course, another generalization, but it gives us a good sense of the difference between manufacturing and service processes. Nowadays, it is not uncommon to find a manufacturing company with a consolidated facility in one part of the world shipping its products globally. Every day, I can choose among products made in different parts of the world. On the other hand, if I twist my ankle and need healthcare treatment, what are the odds I'm going to choose a facility in Honolulu because it would be fun to recuperate while hobbling on the beach? The manufactured product can be produced anywhere and brought to me. To get a service, however, I need to come into contact with the process and there is only a short radius that I'm willing to travel. I'm not driving to New York City to get a Dunkin' Donuts coffee, so the Dunkin' Donuts has to come close to me. Keep in mind, of course, that this is a generalization. Nowadays, many services can be provided from afar using communication technologies. Related to the above characteristic, if the local Dunkin' Donuts draws its customers from a one-mile radius, would it make sense to operate 10 smaller facilities each serving one mile, or to consolidate into one mega facility that would serve a larger radius? Another generalization has to do with the relative emphasis on capital versus labor intensity. It is easy to conceive of a high-tech computerized manufacturing facility operated by a small number of employees. Now contrast that with a hairdressing salon where the labor payroll is by no means insignificant relative to the lease payments for the chairs, styling equipment, etc. Finally, let us say I want to buy paper clips from your manufacturing company. We agree on several aspects of the clip such as the size, color, finish, strength, grade of steel, etc. When the shipment arrives, I test the clips against the same specifications. On the other hand, suppose you and I go to a restaurant and order the same soup. The soup is prepared by the same chef using the exact same ingredients in the same batch. It is served by the same waiter who gives us both the exact same spiel, which he has only practiced 50,000 times. We are both listening to the same music on the radio, looking at the same scenery outside the window, 
etc. As it turns out, you really like this soup. Now what are the odds that I feel likewise? Yuck! There was too much salt. Or maybe it was the ugly music. Who would pick that radio station? What? It's your favorite station? Oh, I'm so sorry. For you, I mean. Or maybe it was the waiter. He just likes to yak, yak, yak about the weather, the game. You enjoy the conversation, whereas I just want to eat in peace. As you can see, for a service process, quality is often in the eyes of the beholder. With these characteristics in mind, we can look at each process within an organization and assess whether it looks more like a manufacturing or a service process. Rather than thinking about an entire company as a manufacturing or a service company, it is important to look instead at the process level. Keep in mind that within any company, there are likely to be processes of all kinds. For example, in a restaurant, which we are likely to label as a service company, we can expect to see manufacturing processes for producing the food. Likewise, in a factory, which we are likely to label as a manufacturing environment, we can expect to find an electrician attending to a maintenance call. Now, if that same electrician fixed a fuse at my house, I would call him or her a service provider. But just because he or she is working in a factory, does the process suddenly become a manufacturing process? No, it is still a service process.